Hello guys, uh, we're back to Broken Swords, Shadow of the Templars, the Director's Cut. My name is Dragon Wolf, and I'm going to pick up from where we left off, which is where the original game starts. We've just had George being involved in an explosion, and it was basically what's left. The, the aftermath, so to speak. The table had been overturned by the explosion. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Now, considering what I know about this game, that's interesting, because he disturbs shit all the time. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnate. Shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence. Like a regular French statesman. Oozed confidence. Did he, I? The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. The column was devoted ex I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read, Salah Adin, 1345. Now, I'll find out what that is in a wee minute. Um, I know already know what it is from playing the game previously. Ah, it's changed from a book to a notepad. I love this bit. And the ladies. <laughs> Other George is supposedly on holiday, he's just a normal American guy. He's like, God damn it, I've got to bring that clown to justice. Because fuck the police, right? Hey, Paper. Alright, let's go have a look and say John does cafe. It was the body of the old man. It was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before. The sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit card. <laughs> the guy's past was a blank page. Now, this is the same guy that didn't want to move a table. So it didn't disturb the evidence, but he's quite happy rifling through the dead guy's stuff. Oh, George. I hope the fact that the mirror was already broken meant I'd escape the bad luck. The mirror is smashed into a thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Poor guy. <coughs> He was pretty mashed up. A mysteriously undamaged bottle of spirits stood on the bar. I needed a stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. Okay. The waitress was clearly suffering from shock. No shit, Sherlock, she's just been blown up. <laughs> oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? No, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't stay. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No. Yes, I am. I studied under Dr. Benton. Who is he? Only one of the most brilliant medical minds on this planet. He taught me everything I know about medicine. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Okay, I didn't realise that was not a yes-no option. Apparently, I was just lied to this poor woman. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a cheat on it. 
I guess a little drop won't hurt. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't <laughs> Functioning alcoholic. Hey, wake up. She didn't respond. If I want another cappuccino, I have to serve myself. The pretty young waitress was uncut. Yes, she was. Right, anything else in here before we go back outside? No. Go oh, that way, I can follow across this way. Let's follow the clown. The clown had fled into this alley, but there was no sign of him now. Oh, oh, black cat crossing your path, never a good idea. It was a plastic crate. There was nothing of interest. It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. Ew. The drain pipe looked as if it would bear my weight. I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. I guess the clown had an escape over the rooftop. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. As I like how he started out in this game, it's like, I've been blown up, I've got a waitress that's in shock, absolutely steaming, I broke someone's drain pipe. <laughs> The cover was too heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. Alright, back to the cafe. We'll go the other way. <coughs> Excuse me. Please! Hold it! I'm not there! Oh, don't shoot! I'm innocent! I'm an American! Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand <laughs> the American Consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground! Put that thing away, Sergeant Blue. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe. Bounce. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead? Move. <laughs> but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by failing death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl and take her statement if you can. The cream of the French cops here. Hey, man, now, who business? Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stoba? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year. No? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blast. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Clown. The clown. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. 
He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll live if she survives the hangover. She says the American claimed to be a doctor. He forced her to drink the brandy. <laughs> can explain everything. Can you, monsieur? Almost everything. She doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd. Don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe? I wonder. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. Enjoy your vacation, Dr. Stobart. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great <laughs> advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My cow. Thanks. There you go. Here There's not much to go on, monsieur. <laughs> on the surface, no. But what left inside the subconscious? I love these two. The door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. In the original, there wasn't these two face conversations. It was just kind of on the screen from what I remember, so that might be new. Also, how quick a turn was that? It's like, oh, you forced a brandy? You lied about being a doctor? Mm, how might you believe? Nah? Ah, you know that, I <laughs> well, Let's talk to the King of France here, shall the we? The sergeant was a scrawny man in his 50s, and he's chicken. Well, that's a thing. Sergeant Moe? Ah, it's just Stubber, yes, sir? That's correct. You remember me? The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our private fault through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, sure. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find this killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. Try to forget being blown up. What is Russell doing with that girl? He is giving her the once over, as you Americans say. Once he gets his teeth into a case, oh, he George's face. Him off. See you later, Sergeant. Excuse me, Mademoiselle? Zerniko. Hi. Uh, my name is George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here in a bomb, Ringo. Sure was. Sat right up for a cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. Jenny had asked how I was feeling. <laughs> yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, right? Oh, no, nothing like that. I make a collage from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just speak to the facts, thank you. Did you see he clung to the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Blender. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. How did Plantar get your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantar said he could supply me with more information. Somehow the car must have known about our appointment. Let's talk about our esteemed 
Police sergeant, was it? Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? I'll pass that an act of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Are you seeing Rosso? Is he here? And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. <laughs> and they were a clown. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Ha <laughs> Brushed off. Why won't you tell me about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is tricky business. Okay, that's a deal. I have to go to bed these pictures. I'll be on soon, with you. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll see you soon. Let's go down this way. Hello, good sir. Hey, you! I thought you'd be arrested! No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun... <laughs> I thought that the... Those automatic spark quadrant punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old cook. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Can't beat. I could have knocked his block off. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Planta. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. But too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. The grant and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest act. <laughs> I was just thinking to say, I was like, calm down, son. Calm down. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Oh! Those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you've noticed the clown. I told you already. I didn't see a thing. He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. It'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. A cop? <laughs> <Are> you <wondering laughs> not? No, but you act like one, sticking your nose in where it's not wanted. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. I wonder what that bang was. Any bodies? Yeah, an old man was killed. Man, I didn't think it was that serious. What about the waitress? Oh, she's fine. Thank the saints. It's a bit morbid, Lenny. Wink, wink. Bodies? All right, let's ask him about stuff. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd help me on a trip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. <laughs> ah, look at this. Damn bleeding out with the rolls. Yeah. Save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? 
something different than 1996, I'm sure. Look after my hole. <laughs> I love how he's more interested in the hole than the tools. It was a battered metal toolbox. I found just what I wanted. A tool for looking at How fortuitous. It was a huge and weighty looking engineer's telephone. Uh, do I really want to call Nicole? I don't have anything. Set into the huge gate was a smaller access door. The door was securely locked. Okay. Well then again, let's call on and see what she says. It's an option, so. Hello, Nico Kulas. Hello, it's George. Oh, hi. Well, I haven't had a lot of luck. You found nothing? Uh, no. Look, I'm very busy right now. Tell me if you have any news, okay? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Adieu, monsieur. See you. Oh, George. Oh, George. Oh, hello. Ah, I was going to the sewers then, I assume. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. He's a regular Sherlock Holmes, this one, isn't he? I'm not going to talk to him again. Items, please. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelled like the entrance to a sewer. Now, I remember most of this first part, which is why I'm going through it so quickly. Once I get further on, I don't remember as much. What is this? As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. a soggy, crumpled paper tissue. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, mm. like breakfast leftovers. This George is a strange one. It was a small scrap of cloth caught on the whisking spike. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. The nose was hollow, printed on the inside with the words La Vise du Monde Paris. It was a bright red plastic nose, part of a clown's costume. Now we're somewhere the clown's been. It was the soggy tissue I found in the sewers. It was the scrap of material I found in the sewer. Okay, up we go. Not hey suspicious there. at all. Oh, right there. Sure, man. I knew you'd come there. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're a trespasser. Come out of here. Immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ah, you won't catch me with tricks like this. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, 
what way you looking for? Don't know what this is. What's this? Terrorists. The meanest, nastiest, dirtiest bunch of guys you ever saw. Yeah. English men with <laughs> The filthy dog. The day they open their tunnel was a bad day for France. I tell you, if I still had the full use of my faculties, I'd march right over there and tell them so. Well, whoever they are, they blew up the cafe. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu. That is awkward. The guy who did it was a calculating, cold-blooded killer. He was disguised as a clown. I followed him into the sewer, and I think he came this way. Ah, mon Dieu. And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my <laughs> mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. Uh -uh. Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Bigard. I didn't realize my waist height was such an attraction. Got you there. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> just like you. Well, let's be honest, he's not wrong in his suspicions at this point. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? What? Hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank you, Doc. A poor girl like her even stay with a life of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> ah, that's what you think. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, he doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down to every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Huh? You'll need some sense of the boots. <laughs> you won't get by those stupid sneakers. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Hey, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave, or do I have to call the police? Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my car? Mm-hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid division? <laughs> a homicide. Hominoid. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you, and I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African era. How can I help you, Inspector? It's amazing what a business card can do for you. Not even mine! Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He cracked me in an unlock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was my eye. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no! He made a big mistake when he took on one of the Vera hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Guy's a massive blowhard. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? You, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, yes. I know her. Quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe over six, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me <laughs> when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenail? Ew! That's horrible. She's a waitress, man. Why are you getting her feet out to a waitress? Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, he doesn't. Well, that was short and sweet, wasn't it? 
Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Oh, why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs, stolen jewels. I don't know, but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, Mr. Well, yeah, but... No, do you know what a Take shop a look is? at this false nose. Ah, uh -huh. that looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his pen, unless he wanted you to find it. Why would he want to do that? To put you off this end. What does this tissue mean <laughs> to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, disgusting. <laughs> What yeah. on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. Uh. This is what I used to open the manhole cover. I have one just as he must have, monsieur. I will fetch it if you like. No, don't bother. Oh, oh wait, it is no bother, monsieur. Ah, forget it. Just trying to be helpful, monsieur. And finally, scrap of stuff. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I recognize that pattern anywhere. Jacket, you say? Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn. <coughs> no, I sent it for repair. A <laughs> pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. It's a pity, because I wanted to steal it. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant homily sister. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not as to. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary pastor. Oh, God. Mm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. <laughs> what was the name on the label? There you go. It was a foreign name. Todd Rick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one this year. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74-98-08-59. The kid. That's his phone number? Yes, that is. A little trick with number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkup. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. I think we're done with this guy, aren't we? I have to be going. Thanks to your help. The citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Raymond, I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Ah! That's why we don't watch her. And then slipped back into the street of fear. It wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had done. Anything here that I can do that. Since we just left, George. I'm guessing no, just the guy. I really don't want to speak to him again. <laughs> ah, I can go this way now. Alright, what have we got? So, the cafe, the police station, and that's pretty much it. Right, let's phone Nico and tell her what we found, because it's a fair bit now. What the hell's that? Oh, the tailor! Hello? Who is this? Hi, my name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Go ahead, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well... I'm trying to trace one of your customers. 
Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. <laughs> there are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Tardrick. Lives that you could save. You're working for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy, huh? <laughs> the faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Planta. I never heard of Planta. None of this has anything to do with me. Finally on the guilt a bit thick there, George. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Frederick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you'll be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Tadric. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Okay. Thanks for nothing, Tadric. Let's call Nico. Hello, Nico Kulas. Hello, it's George. Ah, oh, wait. Uh, you should call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come in to my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. I was used to working alone, but I had to admit it felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone. And first, I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was my editor so scared? There was some kind of secret war going on out there. But who was on which side? One thing I did know. I wasn't going to get the answers sitting at my desk. So I think we'll leave it there. That's another good half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, we'll pick up from Nicole's flat, where she lives her life of poverty. Look at the size of the damn place. Life of poverty, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, any tips, comments, and that, put them in the comment section. And I hope to see you next time. Catch you later, guys.